training yourself to resist advertising is tricky in this world. We're bombarded all the time. So think about DDT. When DDT was first, uh, you know, released out on the market, it was marketed, as it, things always are, as a miraculous way to get rid of bugs. You know, people don't like mosquitoes, so you come up with a product that'll kill all mosquitoes. Well, it doesn't just kill all mosquitoes, it kills everything else. It kills all kinds of, of uh, insects. Now, I was talking earlier uh, the, today about growing up in the 60s and 70s, you could go on, you'd go on a road trip and you'd end up a couple hours later with bugs all over your windshield. That doesn't happen anymore, all right? You can drive all over the place, no bugs, no, no contaminated windshield. Do you think that's a good thing? Do you think it's better that the world has no bugs in it? This is a, a really a very dramatic problem because bugs actually don't hassle you as much as you think they do or as much as you've been told they do. There are a couple bugs we don't like. We don't like insects. We don't like uh, mosquitoes. But insects are the, the rock bottom foundation of the food chain. So when bugs go away, birds go away, for example. You're seeing major population declines in songbirds. One of the reasons is we've eliminated their source of food. In terms of our health, DDT was, sorry, was, um, oh. DDT was marketed as totally safe for us to use. We could spray it right on our kids' heads to get rid of lice, for example. Now you can buy it, or for a while you could buy it in hardware stores. And, you know, foggers, tr fogging trucks would drive up and down neighborhoods and spray the entire neighborhood. Some of you may have relatives, or maybe you, you're, you yourself grew up in a neighborhood that was fogged by DDT trucks. It was marketed in little jingly campaigns, DDT is good for me, with animals and vegetables singing how great DDT was. Then came Rachel Carson, who in the New Yorker magazine and then her book Silent Spring, she described what we now know as uh, the ecological web and about what's known as bioaccumulation. So for those of you who don't know this story, the way it worked was people would spray DDT all over the place. It would rain. The DDT would go into water supplies. It would then saturate the very small microorganisms at the bottom of the food chain, which would get eaten by bigger and bigger things, including fish. And then a raptor, for example, a bald eagle, will come down and pick up a fish and eat it. But because the fish has eaten so many small fish, which themselves have eaten so many smaller fish, which themselves have eaten so many microorganisms, the DDT in the water is starting to move up the food chain and concentrate as it moves up the food chain. By the time it hits an apex predator like a bald eagle, it has now got a whole lot of DDT in its system. And the way it worked with the birds, like bald eagles, is they would go sit on their nest, and because this chemical was messing with its endocrine system, it would lay an egg, and then it would sit on the egg, and the eggshell would crack. So bald eagles and many other birds were no longer able to reproduce because the eggshells were cracking because of the chemical saturation of their bodies. So it just so happens that the bald eagle, which became the kind of the face of the DDT story, was the national symbol, the national bird, and it almost went extinct because of one chemical. Rachel Carson writes this book, the EPA is formed, they ban DDT, and now bald eagles are rebounding beautifully because of one chemical. I live in Baltimore, I take my students canoeing a lot. We go out on the Susquehanna River, we see bald eagles every time we go out. This is a good thing. But one chemical, we have something like 80,000 chemicals in use right now, 80,000. So what is happening out there with all that? It's uh, a very big issue. Of course, the chemical industry, when this came out, uh, you know, Rachel Carson was becoming a problem for their product, so they did everything they could to destroy her. Uh, those of you who have read Silent Spring uh, know, may know this story, but it's worth knowing that she was dying of breast cancer even as this book was coming into print, and she was dead a year and a half after Silent Spring was published. So she became, you know, a great hero of the environmental movement, but was, as she was dying, she was also being publicly crucified for daring to contradict the chemical industry. So then we came up with this other stuff, uh, Agent Orange, which we used in Vietnam as a defoliant, right? Sprayed on jungles, it, it burns all the leaves down so people can run around the forest during the war. After the war, uh, we needed to find new markets for it. So we 
pulled it apart and you took out a component of it known as 2,4-D. 2,4-D is now also uh, available in your local hardware store and your local supermarket. Uh, it is sprayed widely on uh, food crops. And until recently, it was actually still sprayed on my own campus until we got uh, some in, you know, student journalists to write about it and they got rid of it and now they've used, uh, they're using less, less toxic things. Thank you.